Hi, and welcome to the Equilting Life podcast. I'm Chelsea Stratton from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And I'm Sherry McConnell from Equilting Life. And today, this podcast is airing Monday, May 9th. We're in a new month here, so that's really exciting. I feel like it's just zooming on by. I can't believe it's May. I just I can't believe it. And you can feel it in the weather too. Yes. <laughs> it's been kind of hot here again. So. Yeah, we're back in the 90s. Yep, we're back I, in the 90s. I guess we should enjoy the 90s because of what's coming, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, But enough of the weather, you guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Mom is going to share her quilts. And yes. we haven't seen these quilts. No. We, on the podcast yet, but they're old quilts. They're Yes. And I'll tell you what happened. So (laughs) shortly before the pandemic, I did an event at the Christmas Goose Quilt Shop in Las Vegas. And Andrea, who owns that shop, kitted uh, these quilts. And so she had them at her store on display. And I just got them back. (laughs) So they've been they've been gone. And it was so fun to get them back. And so on the wall is Weekender. And it's in our Harper's Garden collection. Actually, both of these quilts are Harper's Garden fabric collection quilts. And yeah, on the wall, it's just a mini charm pack and honey buns. And it just is such a fun quilt to put together. It was a motorbox quilt quilt kit. Uh, oh, I remember just, that. Yeah, just love that quilt. And I'm so happy to have it home here hanging in the podcast mm-hmm. studio. Uh, and then on the table is Summer Shores. And this one was actually first published in American Patchwork and Quilting. And then I did a pattern for it after separately. And this is a fat quarter quilt. And at least 20 fat quarters. You could mix it up even more. As I've been sitting here looking at it, I've even been thinking you could do these little sections in a contrast fabric. There's so many fun things you could do with this quilt. And both of these quilts were quilted by Marian Bott and just (laughs) two unique, really fun quilting designs on them. I love this this orange peel because it's like a double orange peel. Yeah. It's got like yeah. the double ring around it. Yeah, I, I don't think she's used this in a while and I, I just didn't have this quilt out for a while. So yeah, I love it. I love both of them. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun to have some new quilts to share that are old quilts, right? It's it's yeah. really cool too because you're making so many quilts and this fabric line was uh it, it really feels like a long time ago and so to be able to whip these out is like whoa blast from the past yes. like yeah it's really crazy yeah. you have any other quilts that are floating around in any other shops yeah that mom someday you might get back or uh I think I have most of them back I think Andrea still has one. Uh, it's one of my really old patterns, but it's it's really kind of unique, and she still has a sample on the wall. Oh, awesome! And still has those patterns. So, oh, that's cool. I think she might just have one, and I think I've gotten everything back from everyone else. Yeah, so, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so love the quilts. Thank you. It is also. I just want to note, like. Our journey of changing back, slightly changing our backgrounds, because this was the true ivory. Yeah. The Bella ivory. The Bella 60. Yes. Yeah. And then we moved up to the Bella porcelain. And now with our Emma collection is the Bella 200. Right. So it's just kind of different to see the warmness right. of these quilts. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so... I actually have a new find to share today. My husband and I were able to take a little vacation over the weekend and go down to Southern California. And it was a little bit of a quilting trip just because I took some quilts and some fabrics to donate to a guild down there that Chelsea and I had visited recently. I think I talked about this Recently, I just, this guild, just the Beach Cities Quilters Guild, does a lot of quilt donations, and I was just so impressed by them. So I, I took them some quilts to, that they can donate. And anyway, <laughs> I, we were staying at the hotel, and we had never been to the gift shop in that hotel, and we've stayed there for several years while our son was going to college down there. And for some reason, we decided to walk over to the gift shop, and 
my husband was looking for a t-shirt and he's <laughs> so always dad. looking for t-shirts. He actually got five Are t-shirts you on this trip. Yeah, because we found another shop after, but uh, <laughs> anyway, so we were talking to the gentleman who was in the store and he mentioned that his wife designed one of the t-shirts that dad was purchasing and we were like, oh, that's so cool. And so he said, oh, well, let me tell you a little bit about my wife's business. And it was just so inspiring. Her her business is called Montana's Heart, named after her daughter who has Down syndrome. Oh, my goodness. And she is just a really, the mom is just a really great advocate for positivity. And uh, I, I looked up her Instagram and she just shares a lot of really inspirational quotes and self-care. And then it's kind of mixed in with her daughter and her journey to, you know, create a beautiful life yeah. for her daughter. And uh, so if you, I mean, you you could follow her if you're just interested in positivity or if you have someone with Down syndrome in your life, I feel like that would, that would be a great account to follow. Yeah as well and she does design clothing that they had in the gift shops and and she has them in other shops as well and it it was just so fun to see this man's you know love for his family and uh, just to see another small business i'm so glad dad bought one of the t-shirts yeah that's awesome yeah and i couldn't figure it out because all of the the shirts had you know dana point but then some of them said montana's heart and i was like what does Montana have yeah, to do with how does it tie Dana in? Point, California? But then yeah. he explained it all. So that's awesome. I thought that was really, yeah, it was just kind of a fun find this weekend. So we were happy that we stopped in and talked to him. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. All right. Well, uh, what's so, new? Yeah, well, I, I wanted to put this in, in the episode because... This is the first time we're recording since we recorded our last two episodes. So episode 53, which that's the episode where we went sort of back in your lives and saw your, the beginnings of your quilting life to where it is now and looking in the future. And then, so let's start with that. So I think the first <laughs> reaction is that Chelsea talked about her first quilt and I sort of forced it out of you to talk about it and and um, anyway, we put a link to it and then we pop, popped a picture up of that quilt into the video. And how, how did that reaction to your first quilt go, Chelsea? It was awesome. <laughs> and I, so let me just preface this with Billy and I had a conversation after that video was, uh, po- after the podcast went live, you know, and on YouTube and Billy kind of mentioned like, oh, you know, how, uh, how was the reaction to, to the, to the moon and back? And I like, and I like never, it, it was odd for me to even mention this, but I was just like, I told Billy, I was like, I cried. <laughs> like, and it was just really, really cool for me because I went through and I read the, and People but went and bought the pattern, and that like made my heart burst because I really was. It was like I didn't even know what to say when Billy brought was questioning me about it on that podcast. Yeah, you, I, and, you could tell that you were like, "Stop! I don't yeah, want to talk about it." Yeah, so many reservations because I still had that thing inside of me that was like, "No, it wasn't good enough." Blah blah blah, and. So, and then I went through and I did this to myself. I went through and read the comments and I'm sitting there like a babbling ball (laughs) of emotion. And the comments were so uplifting and encouraging. Like some people were like, yes, you know, a smaller size would be so awesome. I have a grandson who, who would love this, you know, and the feedback was just great. And it reminds me how important having a community is in just Ah, uh, you guys warmed my heart. <laughs> and and even we were coming back from a St. George trip that um I stopped I took some time off work and we took our kids to St. George with some friends. And I'm like sitting in the truck crying and Aww. my husband is like, What is going on with you? And I'm like, You wouldn't believe all these kind things people are saying. And I didn't know how much I needed that, you know? Yeah. So it was kind of a little 
That's space in my heart that you all have created. <laughs> so so you're going to do a wall hanging lap quilt version, right? I am. Next and, collection? And yes, okay. I can confirm it. It's okay. designed. All right. <laughs> and I actually can show you a picture today. Oh. And it turned out really cute. There's a few oh, fine tune things I need to do to it since I sized it down. Right. But I'm still, it's almost done. It's basically designed. Oh, fun. And then I wanted to just on that same line... Dad listens to all of our <laughs> podcasts and video, watches all the videos and everything. And so I was in the kitchen and I actually came around the corner and he was listening to that, watching that episode. And it was right in the point when we were talking about how he bought that pattern. Let me guess. He started crying. He did. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Bill, I, are you an... Oh, no, no, I'm not. But uh, so, but then I realized what was on the screen. And then I was like, oh, my goodness. My dad and I are one and the same. We are both very much alike. So full of emotion. So, yeah, that was fun. That is sweet. Okay. And uh, just, I, I guess, since I have the floor here, I'll I'll go on to uh, about episode 54. 54, yeah. I have received three emails in the past two to three days about that episode, What Was Saving oh. Our Lives. So I just yes. want to read a few things because I, I haven't shared this with Billy and Chelsea. So I just want to read a few of these comments. And there were some really nice comments in the yeah. YouTube uh, should comment I, Should as well. we have tissues? Yeah. <laughs> So this first one, hi, Sherry, Chelsea, and Billy. I would just like to thank you all for bringing joy into my daily life. I started watching your podcast from day one whilst I was a part-time worker and through COVID, this was a lifesaver. I went full-time last summer, so I haven't always been able to catch your podcast with changes in routines and adapting to my new role. But I've just come back from a week's holiday on the south coast of England and work is a lot calmer and whilst working today, I have had time to listen to this week's podcast and you have put a huge smile on my face. The last topic was brilliant. What saves you? And I have to agree with Billy on this, that my dog has brought me true joy over this last year after a very tough and long day at work and coming home to my cockapoo, jumping up at me, <laughs> wagging her tail to greet me, helps ease away all the troubles of the day. I am also blessed with having craft as my de-stress. So between quilting, cross-stitching, and knitting, this saves me every day as well. And that's Maria from the UK. And I just loved that. Yeah. And then I have two more. That's so sweet. Teresa said, hi, Sherry, Chelsea, and Billy. Thank you so much for such a wonderful video that you posted on Monday. I thoroughly enjoyed it and laughed along with you, Chelsea. Your expressions and laughter are priceless. The banter between the three of you just made my day, and I really needed it. I also really enjoyed the information that you provided. Thank you for all the time and effort that you put into making your videos. I really appreciate all of them. Uh, and that was Teresa, like I mentioned. And then this last one, let's see. She says that she enjoys my blog, my quilts, patterns. Uh, it has been a real pleasure to root for you as your quilting business grows in, I think, a very organic way, yet with an or intention and hard work. Chelsea is an amazing young woman, talented designer, teacher, and quilter, plus so fun to listen to. <laughs> her commitment to her family while she discovers her own creativity reminds me and probably several of your listeners of our own lives during that very full time of life. But when Billy talked about his new job during the What is Saving Our Lives segment, brilliant, and how much happier he is on a less stressful routine, time with his dog, sleeping better, being more protective more productive, etc. I said, wow. So yay and hooray for all of you getting to carve out a creative, more fulfilled life that contributes to a happier and more productive life. In turn, I really appreciate the inspiration I get by learning new skills, watching your videos and listening to your podcast. You have something very special and I love having a small part supporting that with great admiration and thanks, Barbara. And then she at the end, she says, P.S. Love all the podcasts and have listened multiple times, but 54 was a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I usually listen to Unwind, but this time I was busy taking notes. Oh, oh. I love that. Isn't that great? Well, thank you to everyone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that, those. how she's like, yay and hooray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I was really appreciative of those emails. It's been a, a busy, busy week. 
hardworking week. And so yeah. it's, it's really great to get that those nice emails. And it, it's also good to hear all this feedback from those because they were a little different. Yeah. Both, yeah. you know, both of the um, episodes, one just more interviewing you guys. And then the second one going off topic a little bit away from quilting, but still, yeah, you know, relating yeah. it just to life and everything. And yeah, I, I was, I have to add from things I saw, I was, I, I wanted to also say thank you for all the kind words about my dog because <laughs> there was so <laughs> when, many comments when, when I went yeah. in to put the pictures into it, I was like, I couldn't decide which <laughs> one to do. So I just kept adding, I made like a little montage <laughs> of the time I'm talking. I, yeah. Chelsea, let me know about that before I watched yes. it. <laughs> I caught mom and I was like, Hey, FYI, Billy starts talking about Jack and there's the cutest picture. And I'm like, Oh, that's so sweet. And then it like fades to another and then it fades to another. And I was like, there's more pictures of his dog than of our quilts on here. <laughs> that's true. I was trying yeah. to find different things that oh. that we've done, you know, hikes and it, trips they were all and great baseball pictures. games, <laughs> you know, I don't know. So that's what, yeah, but I probably got a little carried away. So Jack's <laughs> claim to fame, you guys. I, yeah. I do thank everyone for those. And then I, I also found it interesting. I, it also reaffirmed some people are like, school starts at seven o'clock where you're at. I've never heard of that. Like school Whoa. starts at nine o'clock where I'm from or eight 30. And um, so that was good to hear that some other places. Yeah. Have, felt the same. They have different, different start times. And then, um, and then one last thing I, I thought me mentioning the internet was a little like uh, who, who cares about your internet speed, Billy, but somebody also left a comment about like I saw that. how important, especially living in a rural community if before um, high speed internet was available, like basically with the way the world is now, if if you didn't have good internet in different places, you're left in the dark in a lot of in a lot yeah. of ways. And um, right. so they were just talking. So I was like, oh, even someone so uh, noted the the internet speed. Yeah, <laughs> it, so. yeah, it is a real blessing. On on the school start time too. I I thought of something I didn't mention that when we talked about it, but. Somebody told me at one time, and I can't, I don't know if this is true or not, but they said that the reason Clark County School District in Las Vegas has those early start times was initially uh, so that high school students could get out of school and go work in the hotels mm. and oh. because they needed that extra labor, you know, whether they were working at the pool or busing tables or, you know, some of those types of jobs yeah. that high school students could do in the casino industry. Yeah. Yeah. And so that makes sense. Yeah. But now, especially now, working it, I mean, kids don't really work at, in that in, it's, in you that know, high industry school kids. at all. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. no. They're filled by adults. Right. Yeah. No, when I was in high school though, lots of kids I went to school with worked yeah. were working in the hotels at, at for their job after school. So yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. I think. No, it does. Yeah, maybe yeah, might be time to adjust it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, move that start time down. So, and then one last thing for our new new news. This is a long time, but um, there is a we wanted to put a little preview or or whatever that that <laughs> that, that another sewing project <laughs> with me is coming down is coming down the pipeline. Maybe this summer. It is, you guys, and it's going to be with Chelsea this time instead of my mom. So. And oh, I, hope I can't people... wait to watch. <laughs> a teaser. That's what I was trying to think of. I a hope teaser. People enjoy the dynamic of <laughs> Billy and I doing a project together. Yeah. Be working on some new skills, trying to build my arsenal of sewing <laughs> skills. Yeah. I'm already coming up with amazing ideas. <laughs> oh, and also, just while we're on. Our book, Home for the Holidays, yes. actually arrived early. It wasn't supposed to arrive mm -hmm. until June. We both got our author copies. Yes. And you can order and they will ship right out to you. Yep. You can order right away. from both of our uh, Etsy shops. And we will, are both going to sign each other's books so that you can get copies with signatures. And you can also purchase on Amazon. Yeah. Also, Seashore Drive is shipping. <laughs> we both have some fun things in our shops if you want to go and browse both of our shops. If yeah. you're in the States, I guess. <laughs> only yeah. for and, and if you're not in the United States, I know Fat Quarter Shop ships internationally. Yes. And so. 
Yeah, lots of fun things. And now that that's finally here, yeah. we are so happy. Yes. Yeah. And if you're in Canada, I feel like Seashore Drive arrived in Canada a it little bit did. earlier yeah. than here. So you should be able to go to your local quilt shop in Canada if yeah. they ordered it and get it there. Yeah, because so. we have some shop owner friends up there that yes. were posting that they had received it. So yeah. Oh, I just love she, her, oh, Kayla. She, it, yes, I was going to say. I she was, makes, uh, we probably should do an episode and just show Kayla's quilts that she's made with our fabric. Kayla is awesome. <laughs> so, she is wonderful and, and yeah. is always making something new with our fabric lines. Yes. She is awesome. I Maybe love her. Maybe we should have her on the podcast. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. That would be fun. It would be really fun. And honestly, I think it'd be really fun to, yeah, have a shop owner's perspective on the podcast yeah. anyways. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to reach out to her. <laughs> okay. Kayla, if you're listening. If you're listening. <laughs> I might have already emailed you by the time you hear this. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So with all that, we have a, a, to- a main topic today. We have sort of a backup one if we need it. But um, as I presented a couple topics to my mom and sister, they really liked the idea of this one. And they said they could talk about it for a while. So we will see. Oh, we can. <laughs> So the topic I presented to them was creating an ideal sewing setting. And there's a few different things to this. I I would say right now, and and there's videos of both my mom's sewing studio and Chelsea's sewing studio that we've talked about before too. And we're going to be doing an updated one of my mom's because she's had so much work done in there just recently. And even a few more things came at the end of it. So that's why the video still isn't out yet, but that will be coming up within the next month or so. So I would say, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, mom, but I, I feel like you've really created at least physically your like ultimate sewing studio <laughs> at this point in your life. It, yeah. it It's about there. Uh, you know, so appreciate our carpenter who, just uh he he's really incredible i was able to give him my ideas and then he took them a step further and made them all better than than my ideas and yeah. uh yeah yeah it's been Wonderful. a great blessing so like you're into that point and yeah like you said it's a blessing and and you've worked hard to to grow and everything um but that wasn't always the case and we've mentioned that before and we also had jenny doan on the podcast once and she mentioned you know, I just started sewing on the kitchen table. And I think there's a lot of people out there, a lot of quilters that they just have to make do with whatever space they have. And you were in that boat at one point. And Chelsea, I know you were in that boat at one point as well, not having any type of designated area. So I was thinking, you know, you can obviously describe what would be your ideal sewing space. And maybe mom, you already have that, or maybe there is other things you would like. Um, but then also you could talk about tips that you guys could share with other quilters as you were raising four kids and, and just finding places to quilt. And what are still some things that are important to have or designate when you sit down to actually sew and quilt? Yeah. So I don't know who wants to start or where yeah, you want to start. I don't know. But... Do you want to go first? <laughs> I, I'm actually going to go first okay. because I was, when Billy called me about this topic, I was really excited because actually a few days prior, I had seen a post on Instagram talking about this same thing, how you don't need to have this giant, you don't need this giant space. Like Jenny Doan said, you can start on your kitchen table. It's just making, you know, what works and that's how it starts. And that's how it started for me. Like mine has changed so much, but I think I'll just dive into the journey of mine really quick if that's okay. Yeah. Is that yeah. kind of okay? Yeah. So when I first started sewing, I didn't have like a sewing table. I didn't have, you know, really anything. So I was just starting from scratch. And I did. I started sewing a little bit out in the kitchen because I was trying to find the balance of being able to keep an eye on three children <laughs> while I was trying to sew. Right. And so I thought, well, what's the best way to for me to do this. And someone had said, well, I sew on my kitchen table. So, you know, I'm with my kids while I'm doing it. And that's kind of where I started, but I, it just wasn't functional for me because I had to pick everything back up. And I was trying to be really careful with all the tools with three children running around. 
And like, did you store the machine and all your tools in a closet or something? Yes. So every time you'd have every to get them out, time. put them out, and yes. put them away. Yep. Okay. And I had bins, plastic bins, and I would carry like all of my notions out in a bin or whatever. But we have this little, I guess you would call it a sitting room off of the primary uh, suite. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, mother. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband kept telling me like, hey, we can make this room into your own space. And I thought, well, okay, but I don't even have like a sewing table. And it started out, I first moved, I hung two little shelves on the wall and it held some stuff. And there was, when I was in high school, mom got me a vanity and there was a mirror attached to it. And we took that mirror off and we made it my sewing table and it is still my sewing table. It's a pottery barn. They it's might even pot- still sell they it. They might even still sell it. It's a pottery barn kids teen van- vanity. Teen yeah. vanity. Yeah. And I still sew on that thing. But no, it's just over time, my husband went in, he ripped out all the, the old carpet and he put in floors one time. And then we did those Billy bookshelves from Ikea. Right. And then he framed them with all this stuff with wood. And it's just kind of like grown and developed. And you can see it in the video, but it's taken six years for me to develop it into something that is exactly how I want it. But it's really beautiful. It's and beautiful. You have a large walk in closet right off of that. Right that off is of your it. own closet. And so you're able to keep. Yeah. Storage in there right by that space. Yeah. It's really ideal. Yeah. But I think my point is just like, I, it started out not that and it was still okay. Right. But it's grown. My ideal setting wasn't at the kitchen table, if right. I'm being honest. Right. And the, and now I have a sewing space that is ideal because, right. and it's still, it's still small. Right. It's a lot small. It's like one fourth of the size of mom's, I would think, like, or one third. Uh, but it where, works and it's functional. Where right. do you iron? Do you just do it on that cutting table or I, do you have an ironing board somewhere else? I have an ironing board and I whip it out. Okay. And uh, I whip it out every single time I need to iron. Like right now it's up because I'm using it every day. So if there but, was one that you could somehow, I don't know if there's space in there, on the wall that you could pull down would that be mason an upgrade? totally wanted to do that but oh, i go. have other plans in mind that could be happening within the next couple years so we're i'm hoping to add on uh, to my sewing room just straight out the back and add yeah uh we for, have a, for more space for yeah. more space because yeah. i would like to have it be an office as well because i'm doing just as much of that work as i am sewing right with the business so right. But no, I mean, I could, yeah. But right now I feel like I have created an ideal sewing setting for me and yeah. it works great and it's functional. Yeah, I, I love it. It's mm. it's very cheerful over Thank there. You. Yeah, <laughs> there's a picture of it in the new Home for the Holidays yes. book. Yes. I noticed that. I was yes. like, oh, it's in the book. Yeah, so we was, did a yeah. little bit of the photography for that book, the food we photography did. and a little bit from your space we and mine. Did. Yeah. Yeah. So, so mom, why don't you talk about mom's is the best when we, when you had a young family, like when, okay. like, cause I have memories, obviously with the first quilt you made was for me. And I remember actually the tables right behind me here in the <laughs> studio still that you were telling me this was in your, in your bedroom. Yeah. That's where your sewing machine was. And I remember as a kid seeing the sewing machine in your bedroom. Yep. Um, but then when you would like actually work on the quilt, I remember you guys going downstairs with my great grandma and setting up a big thing. And I thought yeah. it was like a fort and I would run under it. But it seems like you made do with, with space. You didn't really have a, a big designated area yeah. at all. Yeah. No, um, I've, uh, I had my sewing machine in my bedroom for years and years and, uh, and then I would work that quilt that I made you, I tied it. So yeah. I had the quilt frames set up in our formal living room and left it there while I tied I it. I remember it. And then you guys would all play under it too. And I, I also did a lot of sewing. I feel like even though I had it in my upstairs, I feel like I did move the sewing machine sometimes downstairs onto the dining table in that house because all of you were downstairs. And if I wanted to sew while you were all awake, I had to be on the same floor of the house. Parallels. With you. Yes. Yeah, Parallels. same idea. And so, I do remember you 
having it downstairs on the dining table too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, I feel like, you know, I would move the sewing machine and move all the stuff. I'm having flashbacks. We did. <laughs> we like, had a good so closet. Crazy. Yeah. Downstairs in that house where I had fabrics in plastic bins and boxes. So, but yeah. And in fact, even when we moved, at one point, we moved. I had the sewing machine when we moved out where we live now. Our first house out here, I had the sewing machine back in my room. For uh, a little while. For a little while. And then we did an addition, and I did kind of an office slash sewing, sewing room. room. So the, the computer and the sewing machine were in the same room. That's where I sewed my first baby quilt. Yeah. And it was and then, not a good experience. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And then we <laughs> built a house out here, and I still... As soon as my oldest daughter left for college, I took over her room. She moved right in there, you guys. Uh, like the day <laughs> of. like. Uh, where was your sewing machine before? Because, I mean, in she was house, there for a couple the years room, before. It was in that in. room by the kitchen. Oh, where that is. Would stay. Because I never was like a, an official resident of that house. I had, right. after I graduated high school, right. we were still in that other house. Right. And I do remember you had the sewing machine in there. Yep, I had But it. when my sister Candace left, yeah, I remember. It was like, she was like out the door and mom was already moving I her stuff. I was <laughs> moving in. Poor girl. Like, like that day, because yeah. the lighting was so great in that. The lighting yeah. was good in that room in those front bedrooms. Yeah. And I just remember thinking, well, from my perspective, oh, this woman is going to be right next to my bedroom yeah. all day and all night. And I was not thrilled. I was <laughs> yeah. not thrilled. Well, and I remember when the three younger kids were choosing their rooms, I, I remember giving Candace the first choice. You did. And she picked that room. And then when you were going, I was like, no, you're never going to move into that room because yeah. that's going to be my sewing room. So pick carefully because yeah. you're staying where you pick. Because the room of Candace's had built-in bookshelves for her books. Candace is a reader. And so that's why she chose it. Right. Yeah. And I ended up putting fabric on those <laughs> shelves after. The, that room is our very early videos that you can still see. Right. The, yeah. the very first, aqua I don't know, walls. 15. With the aqua walls. Mm -hmm videos yeah. that was the room that we're talking about and yeah. mom was like she painted that aqua with a smile on her <laughs> face and she put wood floors in there yeah. and i actually got the paint color from camille ross you kelly did? i called her up and said hey what what color is your sewing room i love it and i painted it the same color and did the wood floors and it was a great space it was just very small that room was really only nine feet by ten feet yeah so it was a very small space, but it, it, you know, it was my space and it was great. And so, it, it worked. Yeah. And you spent most of a very long time sewing in that space, yeah. creating your business and growing and yeah, which is just a testament to it didn't even need to be a huge space. You still made it work. And right. I will admit though, when you walked in there, it looked like fabric had exploded <laughs> in the place because she had like, oh, well, I got these boards over here for this project and this, things were yeah. stacked it on top of each much, other. It was too yeah. much, yeah. Well, and what, what year did Candace move out then? Was Did she, like so, 2008? Did she graduate in 2007? Okay. 2007. And so, so and you started sewing in in the mid 90s so it it took you like 20 years or or a little more oh, than 20 yeah, years to get a space to where you actually had yeah. your first ever designated this room is for sewing and sewing only right yeah you know yeah and it's interesting because i started my blog in 2008 so just about a year after she went to school is when I started my blog and that led to the business side yeah. of it. So, uh, and then when we sold our house that we're talking about now, we went into a rental for a short time and that is, I took, there was a Craziest room right off thing. the front entry set up as kind of maybe an office or a den. I took that for my sewing room. That's when I bought the Billy bookcases. Yes. Uh, because there was no store. That room didn't even have a closet. So, yeah. And then when we purchased this house, I just knew immediately which room was the sewing room because of the lighting. Yeah. It had two. It was the only room in the house that had two yep. windows, windows other than the primary bedroom. Yep. But and so I was just like, hey, that's the sewing this room. This is it. 
Yeah. And it was 16 by 16. Well, about 16 and a half by 16 and a half with a really nice closet. So yeah. And you even showed me something new that everyone I'm sure will see in the video, but new this morning, like you're still doing things to it. Yeah. And it was awesome. Jerry did such a good job on that piece of furniture. And yeah. I can't wait for everyone to see it in the video. It's awesome. Yeah. So he built, he, he first, the first year that we moved in here, he did um, a built in unit in a space that was kind of indented it was like it was meant for a built-in yeah and he put shelves and a couple cupboards at the bottom and then this year he came back and he did a whole set of cupboards and drawers that you see now behind me in the videos but then he also redid all the shelving in the closet and when he was almost done I showed him this picture of a an ironing station with shelves. And I think it was the company is Tracy's Tables. And I just showed him the picture and I said, because they were six or eight months out, you could yeah, purchase from them. But they said, stuff. you know, sorry, it's six or eight months. And then, uh, so I showed him the picture and he just brought it over yesterday, actually. And it's he beautiful. went above and beyond that picture and three drawers, yeah. three shelves, a beautiful large surface yeah. open in the middle so I could actually put a bar stool there and sit there yeah. and use it as a little table it's just perfect I haven't even put anything in the drawers yet so <laughs> it's going to be fun to get even more organized before we film that video for you so but I did have some thoughts on this actually that I wanted to share about an ideal sewing space because I actually took this from an a podcast let me just get my notes. I looked this up last night after Billy sent us the topic. But this was a podcast that was really on organizing your office, organizing and it's the focus on this podcast episode 53 if you want to look it up, but what's they, the name of the podcast? Uh, yeah, what focus is it? on this. Oh, focus on this it's, is the name. It's the Michael Hyatt and Company uh podcast. They have the full focus planners and I really love their podcast because it's just usually a 30 minute listen and it's always on organizing and business and I can apply everything to sewing. But anyway, <laughs> this episode 53 was all about organizing your space. And even though they were talking about office, I applied it all to the sewing room. And so I'm just going to, they had these five principles. Number one, schedule a time to declutter. And I feel like that's so, it down, people. so important <sighs> because even right now, like it was great for me to take some of that stuff down to California and donate it before I'm doing the final organization in the room. I've got some of that stuff out. Uh, number two, put everything in one place. So if you have a space or even if you don't have a space, put all of your sewing stuff on the floor or on a table in one room, put it all in one place. And then just kind of, they said, look, make a list of natural groupings and categories. Is that still topic two? This is number three. Oh. So two is put everything in one place. Three is make a list of natural groupings and categories. So maybe it's pre-cuts, rulers, oh, threads. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were talking about office supplies, things yeah, like that. Yeah, pens, but, pencils. Right. Yeah. But, but I'm like, thread. Yeah. Fat quarter bundles, you know, make a list of how those kind of group together naturally. And then you just, and then step four is deciding where it's all going to go when you either put it back into your space or containerize it to store in a closet, you know, if you're sewing on the kitchen table. Uh, and they had five zones. So number one is you use it every day. You want it Ooh. right close. So the things that I use every day are very available to me in my sewing room. Yeah. Number two, you use frequently. They're within reach, but maybe they're not right on the table or right in that drawer right there, but they're also within reach. Number three, use occasionally. Okay, so my use occasionally, uh, it, it, it kind of depends. It could be stored a little bit more. It could be stored. It could yeah. be in the closet, right? Or a closet. Yeah, it's accessible, but it's... Right. Rarely used, but you still need it. So I feel like... I've got some things that fit into that category, specialty rulers that maybe I use once or twice a year Yeah, in the closet, you know, and then things that you never use, just donate it. Oh, yeah. 
Just gone. Get rid of it. It's done, people. Yep. Zone five is donate. And then their fifth step is just to get it done. And so I just loved that. You know, it applied to business and office, but I, I love that. made it work with my sewing room. And um, I'm kind of doing the final sweep through before we film the video yeah. about that. So I did love, though, at the end of this, contributing to the ideal setting, uh, Billy put are, are, do you listen to music? Do you listen to a podcast? Well, you, do you have can? I love that he put candles or essential oils. <laughs> and then he put, do you feel like going for a walk or getting exercise prior to quilting to help you focus better? Meditation. I'm like, oh my goodness. I love that he put all this. Yeah, outside yeah. of the physical. Yes, outside of the physical. Yeah. yeah. But I, I do music is really important to me. And... I just got a new iPod for my birthday, <laughs> and you should have seen me on there. Did you say iPod? iPod. Well, I, I. <laughs> Billy's well, like, do they make those anymore? Well, Sean, you I said do the know same they make thing. Them. I know you they said make the them, same but... thing. Sean said the same thing to me too. He was like, "It's not an iPod, Chelsea. It's an iTouch." And I'm like, oh. "Well, I don't know, but I did. Mine broke. I was sewing one day, and it fell out of my pocket." And cracked the entire spring, uh, screen. Oh. It was done. And Mason surprised me for my birthday with a new one. And I have just been playing the tunes, you guys, and getting stuff done. So <laughs> music is mine. But yeah, I usually listen to podcasts when I'm cutting things out or even pressing, ironing, sewing. But sometimes, <clears throat> you know, if I'm in the sewing room a lot and I don't know. I've just listened to too many podcasts. Then I'll go to music. Yeah. So I'm just so animated while I sew. Like I wish people could see me. <laughs> I'm always like singing and dancing, and like I think Finn thinks I'm crazy. But oh, that's fun. <laughs> do, do, I am very. I'm strange. <laughs> do you ever feel like there is a point where you need to turn? Like again, yes. I'm not a quilter or, or sewer, but when I'm doing other things, like when I had something I needed to write, like sometimes I can write things or plan things with with some music on but other times i'm like i need to turn everything off to have like full focus i don't know if, if do you ever get like that in your in your quilting where you need like complete silence or ring ding ding yeah me. sometimes i think it, sometimes yeah okay. sometimes i do i'd say 25 percent of the time i'm in complete silence okay and i don't know why that happened actually yeah. that's interesting i don't know why that happens but it's just my brain is like you don't need anything right now but this. Right. Like if I do anything that has math involved, I feel I oh, can't have music yeah. going. For whatever reason, me, I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm not like a math guru or anything, but I can do it. But if I am going to do, like if I'm just doing, I don't know, something with the spreadsheet or I'm trying to add or subtract or divide something, you know, yeah. finances, whatever, I'm like, I need to actually have quiet. I don't know if that was similar That's to quilting because you guys do do some math yeah. measuring and everything. Yeah. yeah, but that might Maybe just be I me. Maybe I do that too. That might just be me. <laughs> I'm gonna take note of that next. Time. Yeah, no. If I'm designing quilt patterns or writing quilt patterns, or I can't have anything. Yeah, it has okay. to be quiet. Yes, yes, That's yes. When that I'm, type yeah, of when work, I'm typing up a pattern. Yeah. Or when I'm blogging, I I can't have yeah. any music on. It, it's on because yeah, you need your own thoughts. Like you don't because mm -hmm. when you're listening to a pot, you're like thinking about other thoughts. You need to be focused on right on your thoughts. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. So I loved that though. <laughs> I was like, oh yes. So, Billy is setting the vibe is what I was feeling. So when you're he mostly wrote music, down. mom's mostly, music. mostly podcasts. Yes. Sometimes you guys switch it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Lately, no, I can't watch shows and can't it's been hard for me yeah. to do that. I've seen some oh. people who watch shows. shows. I think Camille does that. Yeah. And I'm just like I can't watch a show while I'm sewing. I, I just can't. can't because especially if it's a show I like. Right. Like I want to know, oh, no, what was that person's expression when they right. said that comment? What would like I'm very into it right. even when I'm reading a book. Sometimes I will read a paragraph 3 times because I'm like, whoa, what? Like I have to reread it because I'm so invested in Right. The book and want to catch it just right how it was said or maybe yeah. how the person felt and whatever blah 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 yeah. so i don't do those things well yeah so interesting well what about the whole exercise walk thing like I, again i'm speaking from the outside but when i'm 
when I know I need to focus on something, like again, getting, a, I mentioned in the other podcast, getting a walk, like sort of sets me in to where I'm more, I'm more focused. And there's a lot of people that would suggest getting exercise early or something helps, helps yeah. the brain focus on the tasks that you have throughout the day. So I don't know if, if that's helped you guys in, in the sewing room, if I, I feel that that contributes to the sewing setting. See, I wish I would do that. Because <laughs> I I would much rather like t- go take a walk in the morning, but I don't. I do it in the afternoon. I'm almost like my mindset is like, okay, if I get all of these things done, then I'm gonna go. Like I feel like taking a walk is such a treat for me. It's I like enjoy- a reward after yes, the day. Yes, mm-hmm. it's a reward after the day, and I am very excited to have that time to go do that. So I I love it when I make time to do that in the morning and. I don't know why I don't always do it. I'm not really a morning person, but still, if you want to take a walk here in the summer, you you need to go by six. You have to do it in the morning. Yeah. Seven at the latest. That's true. And I and I feel like I do that more in the summer because I think it's because my mind knows if you don't go walking now, it'll be too hot. hot. Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel like I I do that better in the summer. In the winter. In the fall and the spring, I'm kind of like, oh, well, I could take a walk later tonight yeah, in the afternoon. And then I It'll sometimes It'll be so nice. Don't, like, because then it's like you're done with your day and you don't. Yeah. So I, I do a really good job of that in the heat, taking those morning walks. Yeah. So. And do you feel it helps? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I need to do it more. I need mm-hmm. to make it a higher priority. So. Me, the exercise is really a good mental thing. For, yes. Yeah. It's like. I feel much better. I'm not as stressed and yeah. whatever. So yeah, so yeah, I, I would say to... exercise plays into that. But I am not a morning person. Right, I'm gonna sleep in. Yeah, like, most people in our family aren't. Yeah, morning we're not. People. <laughs> Except for Sean. <laughs> he, it, yeah, yeah, he really, it, yeah, he's different. Yeah. There was another comment left by someone who, you know, from the last episode, saying, "Hey, I, she gets up at three. She's in your Patreon group as well. Oh, but um, yes. she's like, I get up at three in the morning." And do my sewing before I go to work at seven. But she, so she's like, it was interesting listening to your um, take on sleep. But she says she's what? in, she's asleep by seven o'clock. Oh, okay, so right. I, like I said, you know, yeah. last episode, there are people that are perfectly, they feel fine getting up early. They right. probably do go to sleep a lot earlier, and it's easy for them to go to sleep. But yeah, yeah. it's just it's whatever works for you, and that's yeah, why that's you know my awesome. mom or my sisters settings or or the way they do things like you said your your other friend watches shows and you guys can't do that you know it's what works for you there's no universal right thing yeah you know so i was gonna say i'm wrangling yeah. my children into bed at 8 p.m yeah <laughs> and they're like yelling at me it's still light outside <laughs> no it's not close your blinds <laughs> i'm like go to bed yeah but yeah, um, I don't stay up late and sew anymore. I go to bed. Yeah. I am asleep. I sew during the day now. Yeah, I never sew late at night oh, yeah. anymore. But, but with you both young kids, used to. we both used oh, to. Oh yeah, yeah. And so I that's would, another change in your setting. Yeah, that, right. When know. Finn was born, I'd have him in my lap, rocking him and sewing with right. one hand, <laughs> like just sewing at night and con- you know. Yeah. And uh, I have pictures too. Like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, no, this was a really great topic to to share. And then, you know, as we will be filming that video, I'll have even more to share kind of as I talk about. For instance, I'm so glad I didn't buy any storage containers until the very end. Once the closet was done, I bought a few. And now that I'm almost to the end, I think there are only two more little baskets or bins I need to purchase. I am proud of you. And so I really, I really, because it's so tempting and you see all the organizing shows and books and, oh, I'm just going to go out and buy all these bins. Well, no, I've been able to repurpose lots and lots of things that I have. And now I just have, you know, like I said, two or three that I'm going to measure yeah. the dimensions and get the biggest container that will fit in that space. See, I am very so, like that, but yeah. in all things, like I want, my husband was like, well, we could do this. And I'm like, nope, not until we reach said goals that we were talking about. Right. But I also do that like in the kitchen the other day, he was like, 
we don't have a whisk. And I said, oh, just use that attachment to the uh, the Bosch that I have. <laughs> oh, just no. use, and he's like, we could buy a whisk. I'm like, oh, it's fine. You Maybe know, I we should could... buy you a no, whisk no, no. for your well, birthday but to I add also... to the gift I already gave you. <laughs> I'm nuts though. Like, but remember, I I I didn't. I won't say steal. I took <laughs> your potato masher. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You had the potato masher for years. I still have it. You still have it? I, I think I do. Oh, my goodness. Like, I just was like, I'm going to call it stealing, Chelsea. I, <laughs> That's, you've, you've gone past this, the limitation of borrowing. Billy says this all the time. He's like, Chelsea takes everything. Like, <laughs> Actually, a but few I won't of your siblings one. have all said at different times, oh you know, if something ever happens to you. <laughs> Like, Chelsea will have the house cleaned out before we get there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yep, we're Sorry. on to you. Yes. <laughs> no, it's a good thing Billy's in charge. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a say. So, oh, anyway. Funny. Yeah, this was a great topic. Yeah. yeah. And you guys are right. We you took plenty of time, so we still that other topic. I we'll can talk save more it. about it, too. We'll save it yeah. for another, another, another future episode. episode. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So our next episode airs Monday, May 23rd. So watch for us then. Oh, and it, the, there will be the third one again. So we'll do another yes. call out oh. for, we've got some great questions yeah, already questions. that have come in, but yes. on the 30th will be the listener question okay. episode. So cool. Just, yeah, keep send sending them, them in if you want, or put them in the comments or email. Yeah. Right. Comments or email. Either one is great and we'll grab them. I've got a little file started with some that have come in over the past couple of weeks, of but course we do. can always use more. So, <laughs> and sometimes, uh, sometimes the questions are similar, but they give us different angles so yeah. that we can give a more complete answer. So never feel shy about yeah. sending that in. Please. We love them. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> thanks so much for stopping by. 